And so my caption of the program is the biblical aspect of work stroke labor for every woman. Many a times women have a misconception, very wrong misconception that I want to clear from your minds. And this one especially goes out to the singles. Many of the singles believe and think that um, well, um, one of the reasons that I want to get married is because I want to get someone who can support me financially. That's husband, quote unquote. And they've gone with that kind of desperation further, 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 further. And even started getting desperate of getting married men who support them outside here. They are called Mpango Wakando. They are called sponsors and all the other weird, weird names that they are given. That is an aspect I want to correct today from the word of God. We are going to be reading scriptures. Very many of the scriptures that we'll be reading this day and even examples, seeing biblical examples of women that labored, of women that worked, just to show you that as a woman, God wants you to work. God wants you to work. God wants you to work. I've repeated it a third time so that you realize the importance of you as a woman working, making your own money, earning your own income. It is very important. Women have been, you know, mishandled. Women have been, uh, you know, stepped on like door rugs, have been used like tissue paper by men. Reason being, they do not work. They are not working. A hundred percent, they are reliant on their husbands. hundred percent, they are reliant on the men in their lives. Their fathers, their brothers, ETC. Why? Because they see themselves as a weaker vessel like um, um, Akuna Makazi. You know, there are no works for women. There are no works for, you know, if men are struggling to get to work, how much more women? I've come with the news to tell you that as a woman, you ought to work. It is in the will of God. It is in the directive of God that you being a woman, you need to work. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want you to realize that your own money is sweet. That when you have an income, you have a voice. That when you have money, you can be able to be a support to yourself, a support to the church, a support to the needy, and a support to your family without having to beg anyone for anything. Praise God. Work is good, and I want to congratulate every woman out there watching me from your offices. God bless you. Watching me from your businesses, the Lord bless you and do well. And you who is watching me from home, by the next time we'll be having a show on work, the Lord will have given you something to do with your own hands in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So allow me very quickly go into the scriptures very, very quickly. Very, very quickly, first of all, what is work? What is work? Work is an activity involving mental or physical activity in order to achieve purpose or result. What is work? Stroke labor. It is an activity involving mental or physical work or activity in order to achieve purpose or result. Let me repeat it a third time. What is work? It is an activity involving mental or physical activity in order to achieve purpose or result. And I want to bring it out the, the opposite way. When you are not working, you are not involving yourself physically. You are not using your mind to be able to bring you what? Purpose. To be able to bring your purpose to, 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 to life. To be able to do what? To earn yourself a living. Praise God. I've, dis I've, I've described work as an activity involving mental or physical activity. So that means when you're not working, your mind is at rest. You're not using it as it should be used. Yourself physically, you are not using your physical body to be able to do what? To achieve your purpose and to achieve results. Financial results, purpose results, ETC in your life and in your destiny. So I want to encourage each and every woman watching me this morning. It is important that you put your hands.
to do something. It is important to put your mind to do something that will be purposeful and that will be meaningful, that will bring what? Result in your life and in your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We read from the book of Ecclesiastes 9 and verses 10. Ecclesiastes 9 and verses 10. What does it say? Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave where thou goest. I read it from NLT. It says, whatever you do, do well. For when you go to the grave, there will be no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom. So work is for the living. If you're breathing this morning, male or female, woman, man, you ought to work. The Bible is telling us in Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 that the grave whereby God giving us the grace to live full lives, eventually uh, all of us will end. There is no work. NLT puts it very well. It says there is no planning. Akuna kupanga, unapanga nini? You've already left the earth. You've already left the work up here. So it says well, there is no planning or knowledge or wisdom at the grave. So what is it telling us? The word of God this morning is telling us, use your mental capacity, use your physical capacity to be able to do what? To be able to bring yourself result, financial result, progress result, growth result. Wake up and do something. Every morning have a schedule that guides your daily, daily activity, eventually adding up to your purpose and adding up to your real, why God has wired you to be alive this morning. We go very quickly also into facts about work. Facts about work. So what are some of the facts about work? The dignity, fact number one is, the dignity of every human being is in their work. When you don't work, you lose your worth. Did you hear that? I said, number one fact about work is the dignity of every human being is in their work. When you do not work, you lose your worth. What I'm trying to say there is that your worth is in your work. Married women, those that especially are facing pepper in their homes and you're a stay-at-home mom, one of the challenges that you are experiencing right now is the experience of stay-at-home moms are good. I don't have a problem. Especially if you have agreed with your husband that for a while raise the children, uh, take care of the home, you know, when the kids are about two years, go outside there and start working. It's okay to be a stay-at-home mom. But one of the challenges that comes with that is the challenge of always being dependent. Dependent on pesa nyuele, dependent on pesa ya outfit, dependent on watoto hawana, dependent on nyumba haina, etc. You are ever constantly asking, what does that put you in the place of? It puts you in the place of, uh, you know, being kind of quote unquote a bother. Kusumbua, unakuwa msumbufu without your knowledge. My question usually goes out to, why should you keep on asking and begging and you have the capacity to start and start small? Praise God. Those are some of the places that women run away from. You know, wanogopa kuanza kidogo. They are afraid of starting small. Bible says do not overlook, do not overlook the days of humble beginning. Never look down on them. Many people who are up here with the, with the invention of electricity, invention of airplanes, invention of Facebook, invention of WhatsApp, they tried. They began small and they got to where they are. So fact number one about work is the dignity of every human being, whether male or female, is in their work. You get dignified. When you can be able to put 10 shillings, when you can be able to put 100,000, when you can be able to put 200,000, it dignifies you as a woman. He says, when you don't work, you lose your worth. Number two, if you do not work, you shouldn't eat. Someone is looking at me, I, yes, it's true. If you do not work, you shouldn't eat. And this one I'll read from the book of 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 10. 2 Thessalonians 3 
the book of 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if you do not work, neither should you eat. Hey, imagine. Work is that serious. If you do not work, you shouldn't eat. Praise God. Whatever you need to do to put your mental and physical capacity to work, do it. Don't be lazy. Don't be full of excuses. Don't be a murmuring person. Don't be a complainer. Don't be a person that looks at opportunities, the slightest opportunity to be able to do what? To say this is the reason as to why I don't work. This is the reason as to why I can't work. This is the reason as to why I'm not working. Stop with the excuses already. The Bible this morning is charging you up and telling you that if you do not work, you don't need to eat. How long can you survive without food? How long can you survive without food? It means then, the longer you can survive without food, it should tell you that wake up quickly, go look for work. Praise God. It's clear. In Ecclesiastes, second, second Ecclesiastes, I mean, sorry, <laughs> 2 Thessalonians 3 and verses 10. It is absolutely clear. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if, you, you, if any of you do not work, neither should you eat. Praise God. It's important. Work is that important. Facts about work, number three. Fact about work, number three. I hope you're getting those facts. They are meant to charge you. They are like wisdom capsules and they are also connected to the work of God. Work gives you to the word of God. Work gives you a sense of satisfaction by reaffirming that you can support yourself. Work gives you a sense of satisfaction by reaffirming that you can support yourself. Work gives you a sense of satisfaction. How did it feel when you used to depend on your mother for hair? You know, when you used to depend on her for shoes, when you used to depend on her for I need a pesaya chama, I need ETC. How did it feel when you translated and came on this other end that now you can be able to pay your own bills? You can be able to take care of your hair. You can be able to take care of, you know, someone has a birthday, you need to buy them a gift. It is, you can buy land for yourself. Work gives you a sense of satisfaction that you can be able to be your own support. How beautiful is that as a woman? It gives you that sense of satisfaction that God forbid today, I don't need to rely fully on my husband. I don't need to rely fully on anyone. I can be able to what? To, to support myself. I can come out strong and support my parents. I can come out strong and support the work of God by giving toward kingdom advancement projects in church without having to rely on someone. That is the satisfaction of working. Have the satisfaction feeding your own mouth, feeding your own children if you have any feeding your own family, helping those that you need to help by what? The sweat of your hands. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt, with the introduction on facts about work and labor, I believe the Lord will bless the works of your hands. When you venture into work, the Lord will indeed increase you. The Lord will indeed multiply you. The, do, the Lord will indeed do you well and show himself mighty and strong in your place of work and increase you and multiply you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Again, I pose a question as we continue here. Should women work according to the Bible? And I answered with a capital yes. Should women work according to the Bible? Exodus um. Chapter 20 and verse 9. Exodus 20 and verse 9. We are going to read a lot of scriptures to be able to make a, a strong base um, for this uh, topic. Exodus 20 and verse 9. Verse 9, verse 9. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. If it was not important for all of us, male and female, to work, the Bible would have specifically singled out and said that men are only to work for six days. But in Exodus 20 and verse 9, it says, it says, 
God. He says, six days shall thou labor. In other words, you work from Monday to Saturday. On Sunday, make sure you rest. You come to church, then you go home and rest. That applies to each and every one, each and every one, each and every one does not single out women. It does not single out on men. You need to work. You need to work as a lady. Should, uh, should women work according to the Bible? I answered yes. And we've read on Exodus 20 and verse 9. And again, we'll read from Psalms 128, 128 and verse 2. It says, you will enjoy the fruit of your labor. How joyful and prosperous will you be? Did it say man? Did you hear it single on man? That you should, you should do what? You should, um, you should, um, you will enjoy the fruit of your labor only for men? No. Labor is cut out Call out for everyone. So Proverbs 31, verse 31, she's one of my biblical mentors as a woman who really uh, worked. So if you can go through the whole of it, Proverbs 31, the whole of it, you'll be able to understand her state, um, her state of uh, work, the way she worked and, and, and all that. Proverbs 31 and verses 31. It states, um, on uh, KJV it states, Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let her own works praise her in the gates. I read from NLT. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. I like it better on KJV where it says, let her own works praise her in the gates. Your works will praise you when you're working well at your place of work. When you're working well, you know, in the village, you know, when you go to visit your mommy and you carry something, you know, you're making your parents proud. Your work will praise you. The first example of a working woman in the Bible is the Proverbs 31 woman. She used to wake up in the morning, early in the morning. She made wool. She made uh, sweaters for her, fa uh, 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 her family. She bought um, land with her own money. And her husband was praised at the gates of the city. Even her own self, by her works, she was done what? According to Proverbs 31, 31, she was praised by her own works. That's the first example that we have of a working woman in the book of Proverbs 31. That's the Proverbs 31 woman. Number two working woman, biblical example of women who worked is Deborah, Judges 4, 4 to 5. Another one of my biblical mentors. I love the way that woman was vocal in her time and she really encourages me to know that women can be able to conquer if she conquered that time right now things are much easier judges 4 4 and verses 5 he says and deborah a prophetess the the wife of lapido uh lapido hey, yeah. she judged israel at that time and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in uh, Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. That was her work. Deborah, Deborah was a what? A judge. Deborah was a wife. Deborah was a judge. And the Bible makes it very clear. Verse 4, that, and Deborah, a prophetess, one, the first thing that she had, she was what? A woman of God. Number two, she was the wife of Lapido. She judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah. That was her office. She used to sit there. And then she judges the whole. She helped the children of Israel with the conflicts, issues, issues, issues. She was the one giving the judgment counsel at that time. She worked. You can imagine being a judge at that particular time whereby judges were scarce. I don't even know how that woman used to manage. Being a prophetess, she had to have a connection. She had to go back and pray, go back and, you know, seek from God, hear from God, have a spiritual walk. And then she was a wife. The Bible says that she was the wife of Lapido. And then she used to judge Israel, sit under the tree from morning to maybe evening or whichever time. That was Deborah's office. And she worked and worked at that time. That is an example to show you that as a woman, there is no sitting down again. There is no murmuring, complaining. There is no saying there is no opportunity. Opportunity comes to those that go to seek for that opportunity. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, biblical example number three is Tabitha. 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 Acts 9 and verse 36. The book of Acts 9 and verse 36. Let's see what the Acts of Tabitha did to her. The book of Acts 9 and verse 36. It says, now there was, a, there was at Joppa a certain disciple, a disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and um, deeds, which she did. 37. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, whom when they had washed, they laid in an upper chamber, 38. And for as much as Lida was, um, was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them, 39. Then Peter arose and went there and, and went to, to them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing with the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. When Tabitha died, she became sick and apparently she died. The works of her hands caused women to weep and, you know, put a demand on Peter. This woman cannot die. The work she did, they came showing off the garments, the sweaters, the things that uh, Tabitha was making whom we also call Dorcas, praise God. And they brought it her, the way of Peter. This woman must rise. She cannot die. Her works spoke for her even after she died. That's a woman that we see in the, work of, in, in, in the, in the word of God that she worked in her time until when she had died. Women, widows came crying to Peter and telling Peter, this woman cannot be dead. She has to awaken. I put it as a challenge to you. The work that you're doing right now, how can it speak for you in the generation to come? When you're not here, how will the work you're doing speak out for you? It's a challenge that you need to take up and arise this day, perfect your work, or if you're not working, you need to arise and put your works, your hands to work in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The dignity of labor, the dignity of labor, the dignity of labor. Remember, we began by introducing that this month was our month of work and labor. And I captioned my topic of the day, the biblical aspect of work stroke labor for every woman. We went ahead and described what is work, went ahead and realized facts about work. We also asked the question, should women work according to the Bible? And we answered yes. Biblical examples of women who worked. Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, we have Deborah. We have Tabitha and many, many, many more. Ruth also is an example that Luseka gave us on the page and, and you know, reminded us. And many other women in the Bible that also are good examples of women that work. Remember today is an intro of what we will be doing I will be preaching on the whole of this month. And part of it is wisdom at the marketplace and also dealing with forces that fight the work of women's hands. And very quickly, before I wrap up my show, I want to handle what is the dignity of labor. When you work, what is the dignity of your work? Praise God. How does it bring out dignity in you as a woman? It earns you respect and honor. It earns you respect and honor. When Dorcas Tabitha died, she had to come back to life according to the widows. She had to come back to life according to the women. Why? They respected the work that she was doing. What does work do for you? It gives you, it, it, it attracts a certain kind of respect. It attracts a certain kind of honor your way. The opposite is true. When you are not working, when you have no source of income, it brings um, a certain kind of disrespect. Yani, you're looked down upon. That is why many women will cry in their homes. My husband does not leave money for food. My husband is doing A, B, C, D. Just try. Do a test, you know, a, a test drive. 
and just get a job for one month and see the way that man will automatically change his attitude on you. That's exactly what work does. That is not to say that men are bad. They are not bad. But what work does for you as a woman, this morning I'm bringing your way, the dignity of labor number one is labor or work brings you respect and it brings you honor. Brings you respect and it brings you honor. The, uh, the Proverbs 31, 31 woman, what do we get as um, the praises she was getting in her city? The husband, when the husband was sitting at the gates with other men, they used to praise her, his wife and say, hey, your wife, your wife, you don't know what the praises they were giving. The children used to praise mama and tell mama, you're, you're, you're a very active woman. When I grow up, I want to be like you. That is what work does. That is what labor does. And you're looking at me this morning. You're wondering why you, you're just like that. You have no respect from your siblings. You have no respect from people around you. You have no respect, especially to the marriage from your husband, is because you are not working. Wake up, bring something on table by the dignity of labor. And soon you will earn what? You will earn your respect and honor as a woman in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Dignity of labor number two, it brings profit. What does work do for you as a woman when you will forge out there, when you launch out there to work? What does it do? It brings you profit. Proverbs 14 and verse 23. Work brings profit, NLT, but mere talk leads to poverty. NLT even makes it better. It says, work brings profit, but mere talk leads to to poverty and that is what many women do they do the latter gossiping about so and so gossiping in the salon gossiping at soccer gossiping you know and what does it bring mere talk brings poverty that's what the bible tells us in in in, in the book of proverbs 14 and verse 23 that work brings profit why don't you choose the work bit of it rather than too much talk that brings what that brings Poverty. From this day, I pray for wisdom, lesser talk, and more work in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look to work more and talk less as a woman. He says that mere talk, mere gossip, mere gossip, mere talking about so and so here and there, it tenderates to poverty. But when you work with your hands, it brings what? It brings profit. Number one, we said it brings what? It brings you respect and honor. Number two, it brings you profit. According to the book of, of Proverbs 14 and verse 23, the dignity of labor stroke work. Number three, the dignity of labor stroke work. Number three, it brings you what? Increase. When you work, what does it do? It brings you increase. If your husband is to bring 10 shillings, you're to bring five shillings. At home, you have 15 bob. Praise God. If your husband is to bring 100,000 and you bring half a million in the home, you have 600,000. What does it say? The dignity of labor is that you continue laboring. You continue working. It brings increase your way. And we read from the book of Proverbs 13 and verses 11. The book of Proverbs 13 and verses 11. Proverbs 13 and verse 11. What does it say? Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth lab by labor shall increase. He that gathereth by labor shall increase. What does NLT of the same uh, uh, Proverbs 13, 11 say? Wealth gotten, wealth from Get rich quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. I love NLT. I love the word of God. Wealth from wealth from get rich schemes. Uh-huh. Quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. I pray for someone. Every hard work that you have been putting in your business. You've been putting at your career. 
You've been putting at your place of work. May it bring increase in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord God multiply the works of your hands and increase you today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not labor in vain in the name of Jesus. Again, Proverbs 13, 11 is what we have read on the dignity of labor number three, which is increase. It is important to work hard. Important, very important. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 13, 11, that wealth from hard work grows over time. In other words, kidogo, kidogo too, the steps might look as if they are very little. The movements might look as if they are very minimal. They might even not be seen. They might look minute at this time. But the Bible encourages us this morning that wealth gotten from hard work grows over time. Do not overlook that small beginning. Do not overlook it. Do not overlook it. Start today. Stop sitting in the house. Stop being a stay-at-home mom and not working. Start working. I encourage you, work, 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 work. Over time, the Bible in, uh, in, in, in Proverbs 13 and verses, um, uh, verses 11, he says, wealth from hard work grows over time. You will soon grow to an empire with the little steps you will begin taking from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bibli um, um, the dignity of labor Number four, the dignity of labor, number four is good life. Who doesn't want a good life? What does dignity of labor attract or work? It attracts good life. Proverbs 10 and verse 16. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 16. It says, the earnings of the godly enhances their lives, but evil people squandereth their money to sin or on sin. The earnings of the godly enhances their life. What does it mean by enhancing? It means when you labor, when you're righteous and you're laboring, it enhances. Enhancing may, means it makes your life better by the day. Makes your life better by the day. And the opposite is true. When you're not working, it makes your life boring. Makes your life bad. It makes your life full of murmuring. It makes your life miserable. Always asking and begging, always requesting, always wanting and complaining. ETC. I want to encourage someone this morning. You want a good life? Wake up and work. Wake up and work. Wake up and labor. You woman that is watching me this morning, the only way to fulfill your purpose, the only way to fulfill your dreams is by working with your hands. Our anchor scripture this month is on the book of Ecclesiastes 9 and verses 10. I want you to read it. Read it. Let it enter your spirit until it gives birth to the importance of work for you in your life in Jesus' mighty name. The dignity of labor, number four, we have said is good life. And the Bible has told us that when you work, you're a righteous man and you work, it enhances your life. May your life be enhanced this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The dignity of labor number five is rulership. Rulership. The dignity of labor number five is one of my favorite scriptures. I love it. I love it. Proverbs 22 and verse 29 is one of my favorite scriptures. I love that scripture. It always ministers to me. Proverbs 22 and verse 29. It says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Seest thou a man? Seest thou a woman diligent in her business? You wake up every morning and you open that your business with a lot of zeal, with a lot of diligence. The Bible says that it will make you what? Stand before big men. It will make you stand before kings. It will make you stand before governors. It will make you stand before MPs. It will make you stand before the president. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Seest thou a man, seest thou a woman, diligent in her business. He shall stand before kings and he shall not stand before mean men. What does NLT state it? 
Do you see any truly competent workers? They will serve kings rather than working for ordinary people. This morning, I want to encourage you. You want to go up the ladder of life. You want to go up the ladder of success. You must work and you will work diligently. Whatever your hands find us to do, do it as if today is the last day for you to get into the realm of millions. Work tirelessly. Work with a lot of diligence. Do research. Go out there and meet up with people of higher circumferences, people who are higher than you in that field, people who have gone ahead. And what does the Bible say? In your diligence, you will stand before kings. You will not stand before mean men. You will stand before kings this month. You will stand before kings this month. I prophesy, you will stand before kings this month in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say a bigger amen. Proverbs 12 and verse 24, still on the same. Rulership, you will rule. Proverbs 12, 24. Say, it says, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be shall be under tribute. Tribute. NLT states it the way I want it. It says, work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Choose it for yourself. NLT is spoiling my mind. It says, work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. In other words, which one do you want? That's the Bible. It will not force it on you. It says, NLT puts it better. Proverbs 12 and verse 24. It says, work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. That's exactly the reward, the dignity of labor. Number five, we have said is rulership. When you work hard, you become a leader. When you're lazy, when you're lazy, when you're lazy, 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 sleeping, complaining, murmuring, excuses, reasons after reasons, you become what? A slave. I pray the Lord give you wisdom to arise and become a worker in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The dignity of labor, number six, it cuts you out of your, de of, of your destiny. It marks, sorry, it marks you out in destiny. What is the dignity of labor? What is the dignity of work? It marks you out in destiny. You will not become an, an entity. You will not become a, someone who is not valued, someone who is not known, someone who is not realized. Someone who is not, you know, taken with weight. When you work, when you become a laborer, when you become someone who works hard, as the Bible has encouraged us this morning, it marks you out in destiny as a person who is well to be known in our times and in our generation. I want to encourage you, work, work, work. The Lord will bless the works of your hands. Whatever you find that to do shall increase. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for someone's business, it shall multiply. You will be known. You will be marked in destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whatever your hands find it to do, the dignity of labor shall earn you respect and honor in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall earn you profit in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. The dignity of your labor shall give you a good life in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall mark you in your destiny. It shall make you a ruler in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wow, I am encouraged to go out there in the market and make a difference for my life and for my destiny as a woman. Be thou encouraged. Start small. Eventually, slowly by slowly, it will get you to where you want to be. Hey.